In episode 34, I answered the question of how do you have a successful relationship if you have an active and busy lifestyle? Masculinity for the intelligent man. I'm David Tien, PhD, and this is Man Up! Welcome to Man Up. I'm David Tien, PhD, and this is episode 34 of Man Up. And uh, I'm in Korea, uh, filming on my own again. Uh, a little bit nervous about that. I always prefer to have my crew here. But I got to do it because I'm traveling so much. So this is answering a question from the Facebook group, the Man Up Private Facebook, Facebook group. A question from Luke. And uh, first off, thanks for the uh, great advice on your YouTube videos. If you don't... Okay, so here's the question. I'm, gonna, uh, um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, okay, I've been talking to a girl online for a little over a month, and we went out on a couple of dates in the past weeks. However, we both lead very busy lifestyles. I work two jobs and do volunteer work at a youth center, very good, and her work as a surgeon has her on long and odd hour shifts. Even though I like her and she's into me and we text and talk a lot, the fact that we can't meet up as much as we would both like to or worries me is that I don't know if it will work or if I would like this in the long term. Any ideas and tips on how, to, how people with active and busy lifestyles can manage a healthy relationship, not just hooking up? Thanks and keep this up. Hey, man, great question. Um, thank you for that question, Luke. Uh, I know exactly what that's like. I'm in a new country every week. Um, I'm in like 10 minutes have to run um, to catch a shuttle bus to the airport to Canada. Um, that's kind of a, a long flight. And then I'll be back in Singapore, then to uh, Phuket, then back to Singapore, then Bangkok, then Shanghai, then Bangkok, then Singapore, and then it's Christmas. <laughs> okay, so that, that's like a month and a half for me. Uh, so yeah, um, so, well, at least you two are in the same city. Now, here's the deal. If you are genuinely busy and it's not like uh, you're lying at home, like on the bed and just like, oh, I wish you would see me or something. If you're genuinely busy and it sounds like you are, you work two jobs and do volunteering. She's a surgeon and has uh, odd shifts and long shifts. Um, then you're busy with the time. So you're, you're doing things that you chose to do and that's good. And that means that you're not just idling around. Um, so this is either a red herring uh, of a question or there's something that you really want to ask that you didn't really ask here, um, which is uh, my, my question back to you would be, are you lonely? Because it sounds like um, if you're working two jobs and volunteering, you don't even have time to be lonely, <laughs> right? Like, so uh, if in the spare time you do have, if your schedules coincide maybe 50% of the time, that's great. And the other 50% of the time, get some friends. I mean, like, if you're so busy, like, ooh, you're busy. If you're so fucking busy, then that's great. And that means that you don't need a relationship. If you're so busy that you don't even have time for a relationship, then you don't, then you have shown to yourself that you don't need one. Now, if you feel lonely while you're doing your job, then fucking quit one of those jobs so you can have a relationship because relationships take time. If, however, both of you are happy in your jobs and after working uh, during the week, maybe you've got I don't know, eight hours of spare socializing time where you're not just like vegging out. Cause like if you're introverted in any way, you're just gonna, when you're done a long day at work, you kind of want to spend some time alone, maybe like an hour of just like vegging out in front of the TV or something. Um, and, but if you're, so if you're an average person, then like you're working really hard, you get eight hours a week, Four of those hours you should, be, you should be spending with your friends because everybody should have friends even when you're in a relationship. Have some friends. So you spend the four hours with friends. Then you have four hours a week with her. That's half your free time. That's quite a lot. And um, make that four hours count. Make it really count. Make sure that you're doing something you really, really enjoy. And it's maybe like a year into the relationship, you could just, the two of you, kick back and watch something on TV or some shit like that. But, you know, up until that point... Um, do something special in those four hours, something really, really enjoyable, like treat yourself to something really, really nice, something maybe that's pampering or something adventurous, uh, make those four hours count because you only have like what, eight hours of free time anyway. Um, I think that's significant. Now, 
Is that the basis of a long-term relationship, like a serious, deep one? No, but you don't have time for a deep, serious relationship anyway. So what the fuck are you talking about? Um, unless, you know, you want to, unless you're not really asking the question you really want to ask. Um, so busy people will have to grow their relationships slower. That's not a bad thing at all. I think people rush into relationships in the modern world too fast anyway, um, because they're brainwashed by all the crap from Hollywood and, and like Korean dramas and shit. Um, and then they don't, you know, the movies are great in the courtship phase. Those are great movies. And then the couple gets together and the movie ends. That's when the hard work begins. That's when like the real stuff happens. Um, and uh, people think, oh, all of the drama is in the courtship. Well, there, actually, there's a lot of drama in the courtship, but, um, but you have to do it in a sustainable way. Sustainable relationships um, sh don't um, generally exhibit um, the pattern of um, intense, uh, intense short courtships followed by very long uh, relationships, not in the modern world, you know, when, when, there's, when it's so easy to back out of the committed relationship now. I mean, that sort of thing might have worked in the 1800s when Jane Austen was writing about it, because <laughs> you, you just could. It'd be much more difficult to, to divorce, um, but uh, not in the modern world. So do it sustainably. There's nothing wrong with doing four hours a week because you have eight hours to spare. That's, that's quite a, um, a big chunk of your time already. And just make sure that those four hours count. Um, if you're so busy that you're working all these jobs, that means you're making some extra moolah and you can hire a lifestyle concierge. I have one, I use Quintessentially, they're great. I get no affiliate commission <laughs> mentioning them at all. I just, there's many of these uh, concierge companies, I use Quintessentially. And you can basically just tell Quintessentially, here are the things I wanna do, give me a list of the top five ways to do that here in the city. And then you just pick one, they make the reservations all the way down the line, saves all this time. And then you just, the two of you just show up, you have an amazing four hours. And uh, that, I mean, that's a basis of a good one year relationship. And hopefully after that one year, you'll, you'll be able to free up more time if you want to get serious about it. Um, and it's just really just a matter of apportioning your own time. So, uh, time management. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, this is Man Up. I'm David Tan, PhD. Make sure you join the private Facebook group. Click the link and join the private Facebook, Facebook group. We uh, approve requests about every day. And uh, you can ask your uh, personal questions to me personally and I'll, get, I'll give you an answer personally. All right, man. Uh, this is Man Up.